Elgar Avenue, deep in Stonebridge Park, was possibly uniquely in London named after its telephone exchange, because the local exchange was called Elgar. Generally it was the other way around. Certain telephone exchanges were named after local streets. But before we concentrate upon telephones, a bit of background is needed. During the course of the 19th and 20th centuries, there was a tendency for information systems in the world to move from word-based systems to number-based systems. In London, for instance, at the beginning of the 19th century, the only ways of describing London were convoluted descriptions of how to get to each street. There were many duplicate street names, and it was a bit of a mess. My own father kept up this tradition well into the 20th century given directions on how to get to a place by which pub was on a particular corner. The introduction of a UK-wide postal service in 1840 spurred the Victorians into action. Many postal workers were confused, even though house numbers rather than house names had started to be introduced. But the powers that be saw the thousands of duplicate street names in London, and these started to be addressed by name changes. In 1857, London was divided into 10 postal districts EC, East Central, WC, West Central, North, Northeast, East, Southeast, South, Southwest, West, and Northwest. The South and Northeast sectors were later abolished. Six years later, in 1917, as a wartime measure to improve efficiency, each postal district was further subdivided into subdistricts each identified by a number. Similar things happened to the road system in the UK. There were thousands of high streets, thousands of London roads. National navigation was quite difficult. Watling Street, for instance, led from London to Holyhead. But if a driver stopped for lunch in Oswestry, which way out of town led to Holyhead? Was it Willow Street? Shrewsbury Road? Work on road classification began in 1913 by the government's roads board. A classification system was created under which important routes connecting large population centres were designated as Class 1 and roads of lesser importance as Class 2. The definitive list of these roads was published on the 1st of April 1923. In time this evolved into the A roads and B roads. Shortly after 1923, these numbers started to appear in road atlases and on signs on the roads themselves, making them a tool for motorists. And the invention of the telephone followed a similar trajectory. Before the invention of the rotary dial, a customer would talk to the operator and ask to be connected to another subscriber. Good afternoon, operator. Mrs Clancy, in Bishopsgate, please. London ended up with a lot of telephone exchanges. Customers were eventually each given telephone numbers to use, two, three, four, or sometimes five digits long, depending on how big the subscriber base was for a particular exchange. Hello, Central. Mrs. Clancy at Bishopsgate 434, please. Exchange names were usually closely tied to the physical location of the exchanges, being the name of a city, town, village, or district. In November 1922, the General Post Office adopted a system called the Stroger system. For London, this required development of the so-called direct or telephone system. This enabled operation with a mixture of both automatic and manual local exchanges. In 1927, the first direct or exchange was brought into service in Hoban and rolled out progressively across Greater London. Telephone numbers were displayed, preceded by the exchange name, with the first three letters highlighted to indicate the code and number. Subscriber trunk dialing, STD, was introduced nationally only as late as 1958, and this allowed people to dial long-distance calls without operator assistance. With the advent of STD, folk began to stop saying their number as the first thing they said on answering a phone. L Street 2410. This habit had taken root originally to confirm to an operator that they placed the correct connector in the correct socket. Nobody using a mobile phone now answers a call with their number, 
07831609599. London incrementally introduced the ability to direct dial customers at other exchanges in the capital. It made sense in people's heads for two systems to be used numbers for a particular telephone and letters for an exchange name. It made sense for an exchange in Elstree to be called Elstree. Each number on a telephone dial had letters displayed next to it. Exchanges would be given an easy to remember alphabetical equivalent. Each exchange would have three beginning letters, which is what the customer dialed. Using an alphabetical system, the designers were limited in options. Telephone dials had the numbers 1 through to 0. Donna? Yes? Any chance that you could read this out, my electronic pal? Sure. I'm here to do the boring stuff. Next to the two were the letters A, B and C. Next to 3, D, E and F. Next to 4, G, H and I. Actually, Next to five, you should get the J, idea by K now. L. Next to 6, M and N. Next to 7, P, R and S. No exchanges began with the number 1. These were reserved numbers for GPO services. 1, 2, 3 in time became the speaking clock. And who could forget 160 for dialer disk? Apparently, many younger people. No exchanges could begin with a zero either. Dialing zero, or O, connected to the operator. So that it could be found easily in an emergency in the dark, one hole back from the metal stopper beside the zero, the number 999 was reserved for the police fire and ambulance. Why this number? Why this complicated? Nobody knows. So, each exchange code was three characters long. The London Telephone Exchange system designers were left with numbers stretching from 220 to 998, never using a 1. Some exchanges were easy to alphabeticalize logically. The first exchange numerically was 220, we'll come back to this. There couldn't be a 221 because 1 was never used, it had no letters next to it. The next exchange alphabetically numerically was Abbey for Westminster. Westminster had an abbey. Easy to remember. The customer dialed ABB for this exchange. 222. But why not WES, Westminster, 937? Because that was being used for Weston in Kensington. So 223 was left as a spare. 224 was also spare. 225 was Balham. Balham. Nice. Tooting area. 226 was Canonbury. Canonbury, yeah, that makes sense. 227 was Barnet. Barnet, yep. 228 was Battersea. Battersea, cooking with gas now. 229 was Bayswater. Bayswater, easy to remember. So what about 220, which we left to come back to later? Ankton, deep in West London, had a telephone exchange. Now ACT would be 228 but 228 was already Battersea. What's that I hear? There's a road in Acton called Acorn Gardens. Perfect. Acton could be A-C-O. 220. Acorn. And this story just covers the 22 numbers. All over London, exchange names were needed. So let's come finally to the wonderful and utterly wacky exchange names of London. Some came with dubious justifications, and some were just weird, made-up nonsense. Actually, there were 261 named exchanges in London, and we can't keep stopping the graphics for the odd ones. We've provided a link in the YouTube description to the really obscure ones.
Well, full marks for getting this far through the list of telephone exchanges. Since at the start we were talking about Elgar Avenue in Stonebridge Park, let's continue for a bit about the area. Stonebridge Park is the name of the local railway station, but the area was always simply called Stonebridge. Originally named after an actual stone bridge built in the late 17th century, when most bridges were made of wood, over the River Brent to the north. It was relatively obscure until the coming of the railway in 1912. But the coming of the North Circular Road in 1934 attracted a lot of industry. This in turn attracted a lot of residents. And those residents created a lot of traffic. <laughs> 